we're live. We're talking about eating for energy, eating for energy. All right. Um, so we're going to be on Instagram in a second here. And I'm going to try and I love answering questions. I mean, that's that's the best part about this whole thing. Um, answering the questions. But we also got to cover some content here. So um, in the chat box, let us know where you're coming from. What type of diabetes are you living with? And let's have some fun today. So we here at Mastering Diabetes, we have been running our diabetes coaching program for uh, since 2017 now. And truthfully, like it was happening before then because Cyrus and I were both operating coaching programs before we joined forces. So lots of coaching over many years. And one of the biggest complaints that we receive, one of the biggest requests that we receive is I want more energy. I want more energy. And it's amazing how, how simple it is to get more energy, right? And, and really, I say the same thing over and over and over again on these shows um, because it's just, it's the scientific facts, which is that if you want to become more energetic, you still just have to focus on one thing. And that one thing is what decisions do I make to become more insulin sensitive? If, if you do that, if you start following the Mastering Diabetes Method in pursuit of maximum insulin sensitivity, you will unquestionably get more energy. You'll become more energetic. It's like these conditions come together, right? The excess body weight, the, the excess, um, like the, the brain fog, right? The the high blood glucose, the high E1C, the high blood pressure, the high cholesterol, they, they, all, they all come together. And the key message that I'm looking to deliver over and over and over again, and on like every messaging, is that you don't need to do different things to address those issues. You don't need to do different things. Like, don't make your life more complicated than it needs to be, okay? Focus on the basics and continue down the one path of if I become more insulin sensitive, I know that all these other things are gonna be improving. So uh, I, I really want you guys to be empowered and have the knowledge to get this done. So this is our book, Mastering Diabetes. We, uh, the subtitle is The Revolutionary Method to Reverse Insulin Resistance Permanently in Type 1, Type 1.5, Type 2, Prediabetes, and Gestational Diabetes, all right? That is what we're doing here. So in the chat box, go ahead, pop in any questions you have that uh, I, can, I can help answer about becoming more insulin sensitive and, and gaining more energy. So uh, I'm sorry, I missed that question. Um, waiting for test results, most likely type one. Thanks for all you do. Okay, Linda, glad you're, glad you're doing that. We also run into this all the time. So many people being misdiagnosed, unfortunately misdiagnosed. All right. So we have Liz from the UK, pre-diabetes and had gestational diabetes with both births. Okay. So when you have gestational diabetes, that is, again, it's like a huge wake up call because your chances of developing type two diabetes over the course of your life increase dramatically when you have, you know, blood glucose challenges during pregnancy. And oftentimes it does go away after you've given birth. Right. But don't, don't let that fool you. That is the ultimate wake-up call to start making lifestyle changes and learning what can you do to become more insulin sensitive. Facebook and type 2 since a teen, or fasting blood sugar and type 2 since a teen, I was a weird case because everyone didn't understand why I was so young and not overweight. Interesting. So I wonder if you've been misdiagnosed. I wonder if you're trying to say maybe LADA. But that's the funny thing about LADA, okay? So... Latent autoimmune diabetes in adults is uh, a specific term. It's a specific diagnosis. And as the title says, in adults. But in our coaching practice, I have come across young people who are you know, under the age of 30 who have enough insulin production to not really fit into the type 1 category, right? So there's a lot of nuance. There's a lot of nuance about a lot of this stuff. And I will tell you, and that's okay. That's great, right? If you still have a decent amount of insulin production, that's fantastic. But the name of the game is still at that point to focus on what can you do to make 
the insulin you have work the best as possible, right? That's that's the focus. That's what we're looking for. All right, let's see. what The day I was diagnosed, two people, including my doctor, said I have the most energy of anyone they know. Out of all the list of insulin resistance in type 2, I only had one, obesity. I've always been active, but my eating habits were not great, even the wrong foods. Okay, Cindy, I'm, I'm glad you're here. That's fantastic. Um, I hope you've gotten the right diagnosis and you're, you're making, making good decisions here. So um, eating for energy is going to include eating a lot of green light foods. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys a list of the foods that are going to help you become the most energetic. So we're going to type in mastering diabetes, high carb foods. Anybody can see this list I'm about to show you by simply typing in mastering diabetes, high carb foods. All right. I'm going to share my screen and you'll be able to easily get this via Google easily. Okay. No problem. This list is also in our book and um, it's free here on the website. So these are foods that are high in water content, loaded with water. They're high in fiber, right? So there's a lot of fiber in these foods and they are very nutrient dense, right? There is a lot of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, phytochemicals. These are nutrient dense foods, okay? That's what these are. So the green light category, there are fruits, right? In the fruits category, uh, there's a lot of options. Now, of, um, of all the foods that we have listed here on this particular website, fruits are the most abundant, but that's because the USDA nutrient database is missing a lot of the, the grains and missing a lot of the beans. So it's just incomplete. But this is from the USDA nutrient database. That's where all these foods came from. Um, so that's, that's how this list was created. I, it, was a, it was a college project for me. I went through and I looked at every single food listed in the database, like over 9,000 foods. Now, it was easy to wipe out big categories, right? Because I wasn't looking in the dairy category. I wasn't looking in the meat category. But there was a lot of stuff to look through when it came to just like all things in, you know, produce and all that. Because it's like there's processed versions of all these foods. But nonetheless, okay, this... This is the list. So let's, let's get going. Uh, I'm not going to talk about every fruit because that would take forever. Plantains are one I would like to highlight. Plantains are widely available. Okay. They are available year round. They're very inexpensive. Okay. And they taste fantastic and can be prepared in a lot of different ways. You can bake them. You can steam them. You can eat them raw. All right. Persimmons are in season right now. I got a bunch of persimmons behind me. Now is the time to really load up on persimmons, really load up, okay? Because the season's going to end and it takes a long time for them to ripen. Let's look at a few others here. Jackfruit, juicy fruit gum stole their flavor from jackfruit. Bananas, okay? That's a good one. Pomegranate, figs, grapes, lychees. I love lychees. Cherries, oranges, mangoes, kiwi. All right. Blueberries, apples, raspberries, loquats, clementines. Uh, I love nectarines. Oh my gosh. I love nectarines. Papaya, grapefruit, prickly pears, honeydew melon, strawberries. All right. It's abundant. All right. Starchy vegetables. Guys, these are energy foods. These are the type of foods because you're going to be getting uh, the carbohydrate rich, uh, a carbohydrate energy you need to maximize your insulin sensitivity and have stable blood glucose and love life. So we got yams in here. We got corn. We got white potatoes. We got red potatoes, parsnips, carrots, spaghetti squash, butternut squash. All right. Beans, peas, and lentils. There are so many varieties. Again, this list is, is not complete because the USA, USDA nutrient database is, doesn't really understand the expansiveness of produce, but it's still a darn good list, right? So in the chat box, um, I'm curious, do you see a food on the screen that you're looking forward to trying? Like put the letter T in the chat box if you're, if you're up for trying some new foods. Like are you ready to expand the variety in your diet? Like are you ready for that? Put T in the chat box, okay? Put T in the chat box if you want to try some of these. Like have you ever had, uh, let's see, lima beans? Have you ever had... Uh, yellow beans 
Have you ever had a grain like spelt or barley or millet? Uh, have you ever had rye? Have you ever had teff, amaranth, bulgur, buckwheat? Like there are so many different options, okay? All right, non-starchy vegetables, tons of those. Uh, these are really, really key for keeping your blood glucose steady and uh, optimizing your overall blood glucose profile. Okay, broccoli, eggplant, tomatillos, rutabaga, kohlrabi, cauliflower. Chayote is one of my favorite. Chayote is an under uh, appreciated uh, food and it doesn't actually have much flavor, but it's it's got great texture and, and you can like add spices and stuff to it to kind of make it amazing. I love okra, that's a great snack. Asparagus, tomatoes, zucchini is my favorite. Uh, it's funny as I love zucchini, but I just, I, I do not like cucumber. It's so funny. I'd have to have a lot of other flavors to, in the salad to like get the cucumber down, but, but that's funny. Um, Steven Todd Smith, kohlrabi. That's hilarious. Good to see you, Steven Todd Smith. <laughs> what a riot. Uh, leafy greens, um, leeks. A lot of people like if you've never experienced baked leeks, that's a top notch experience. Green onions, arugula. I love arugula. Boy, do I love arugula. That's a good one. Uh, endive. There's so many varieties of lettuce. Even these varieties of lettuce, they're incomplete. Incomplete. All right. Herbs and spices. So that's just uh, that's just a quick list of like energy giving foods. This that if you can get to those foods. There's a list in our book um, that's on the internet. Just type in mastering diabetes high carb foods, and you will get to that list. Okay, and hopefully you get inspired to try some more. Here we go. Type two A one C in June thirteen point five. Started this, and in July A one C ten. I retested last month A one C six point six. I had to stop one diabetic medication because of my nights I was going low. Yes, Jessica, that's fantastic. That is amazing progress. And keep going, keep going. Like you're on your way to, you know, to you know, fully reverse type two diabetes. I think I think that's what you said you have. But to fully reverse type two diabetes, you got to get to that non-diabetic A1C. Then you got to maintain that for over a year with with no medications. Right. That's when you fully reverse it. So. Keep going, keep going. I'm eating way better and have lost 50 pounds over the last year and a half. So, yeah, so I started out just telling you guys, you know, look, we've been doing this diabetes coaching, you know, since 2017 and really before that. And we also have a program called Mastering Weight Loss. So we basically learned a ton through working with people with all forms of diabetes. And we learned there's some nuanced details around weight loss and insulin sensitivity that a lot of people just aren't talking about and a lot of people don't understand. And it's, it's this concept of, permanently reversing insulin resistance. It's that particular concept. That's what leads to the results for not just diabetes, but for weight loss as well and sustained weight loss. Okay. That's what we're looking for. All right. What do we got here? Uh, all the way high volume nutrient dense, hundred percent just gets it done. Pleasure from dopamine release is relative like drugs. You can't go from heroin to weed and feel happy. Eat only healthy, be happy. All right, but there we go. Uh, Let's, let's eat healthy and be happy. Post-breakfast glucose spikes. I eat oats with fruit. Any suggestions to prevent that high spike? All right, so this is a fascinating topic. I still need to write like the official article on this one. This one kind of like lives in my head and hasn't really been documented, but this is something that happens, okay? The, you, when you're living with insulin resistance, you are struggling to take glucose out of your bloodstream into your cells, okay? That's, that's the challenge here. That, that is, that's insulin resistance is the diminished ability of your body to take glucose out of your bloodstream into your cells. It, it exists on a spectrum, okay? So the thing about oats is that oats have a particularly higher ratio of glucose to fructose, right? Like, like it's, it's very, very high in glucose, which for people who are insulin resistant can make it more challenging. So that is part of the reason that fruit helps people become so insulin sensitive because it does have a large amount of fructose and fructose is metabolized independent of insulin. Okay. So that is a very, very important nuance that very few people understand. That is part, and again, the fructose in fruit is in, the, is in a package. Fructose has this, it's gotten this bad name, like it's the worst thing ever. 
it's really, it's fructose in whole foods is not a problem. Isolated anything is almost a problem, right? So isolated fructose, of course, that's a problem. All right. So, so there are certain foods that are problematic when you're very insulin resistant. Oats is one of them. All right. Now you can combat this by number one, making sure you're consuming oat groats. All right. Um, and then steel cut oats would be next. And then uh, like quick oats would be third. Quick oats would, are very challenging, very challenging for people living with blood glucose challenges. Okay. So uh, eat the whole form, eat the whole form. That, that's, that's essential. Okay. All right. Somebody says, I bought your MD book on Audible and listen to it when I go walking. Great book. Excellent, Linda. Yeah, the book's on Audible. Um, this is also a fun announcement. The book is on Spotify. If you pay for Spotify, like you just, you pay for that music service, you don't have ads and whatever, you get like 15 hours of audiobooks for free. And our book is one of them and it's not 15 hours long. So as long as you're paying for your Spotify per month, you can listen to our book for free. Just pick, pick a month to do it and listen to that book and a couple other good ones, right? So it's not, if, if you've never opened up an Audible account, just open up a free Audible account. Your first book is free, right? So hope you guys get access to it. it uh, it's going to be at your library. Uh, once is an optimal health. Can you, uh, can you uphold plant fats, especially if I'm female, a child bearing age? Would ratios change at all? I've been. Uh, the answer is you totally can, right? So. It, it, like, there's a big debate about this, right? And the answer is you can do what you think is best for you. Talk to your, your medical team, um, your midwife, whoever's involved, get the proper blood work done so you're feeling confident about your health and your body. And if you want to start tweaking that, by all means, go for it. Hopefully you pick whole foods, right? Like um, avocados, nuts and seeds, those I would, and, and like olives and durian and things like that. Those are better options than, in my opinion, than going and having an oil, right? An oil, you, you remove so many of the nutrients. You just, don't, you just don't need the oil and you're getting excess calories. It's just it's unnecessary. So I've been eating raw for six days, fruit and veggies. My glucose has been good. Bambi, that's awesome. That's awesome. I'm going to answer a question on Instagram. As a type one, I need to know accurate carb counts in order to administer insulin. Can you speak about that? Yes. Okay, great comment from Instagram. All right. So. Um, this is the mastering diabetes method has four components. The first one is low fat plant-based whole food nutrition. The second one is intermittent fasting. Then you have daily movement and then you have the decision tree. Okay. The decision tree is exactly what this person on Instagram is, is, is like ref referring to, to a certain extent. Okay. So this is the, this is the document. I'm not going to go through all this right now. You can just Google mastering diabetes decision tree, or you can read about it in the book. But the bottom line is at mastering diabetes, we are fully, fully aware how important it is to know the carb count of, of what you're eating. It's essential. So we include that in all our recipes. We include it in our weekly meal plan. Um, when I post a recipe on Instagram, I tell you how many carbs I'm consuming. Like you have to, you have to know, especially with insulin dependent where you're bolusing and you got to know your ratio and you got to know that your ratio changes during the day. The ratio in the morning is not going to be the same at night. And by filling out decision trees, you start to become aware of that. And then you become aware of how certain lifestyle choices will impact, like not lifestyle choices, I would say like certain patterns, like how hard did you exercise yesterday? What type of exercise did you do? How hard did you exercise this morning? Did you walk after your meal? Like you start to see these key things that have the biggest impact on your blood glucose and you start to adjust your ratios. Okay. It is huge. Is I think the decision tree is a true, true game changer. Okay. Very, very important. All right. Okay. So uh, this happens to me a lot. I started waiting 12 to 16 hours between my last meal and breakfast. So brunch is my breakfast and protein with a healthy fat helps me. Okay, Jessica, you got to do what you got to do. Um, intermittent fasting can be very beneficial. I'm glad you're, you're playing around with that. All right. Insulin is needed to get your sugar to cells, but it gets turned away when the cell is filled with fat. When this happens, can more fat still get into the cell? Does the fat need insulin to enter the cell? You know, the specific metabolism, I'm not going to be an expert on that. Um, but the bottom line is, could you continue to get 
more overweight and more overweight and more overweight by eating more and more fat? The answer is yes, right? Fat cells become larger and larger and larger. All right. So um, you got to be careful with that. 46 years old after test, my weight loss management put me as a high in some resistance A1C unstable. Is high protein diet, low carb the best route? Okay, Natalia, I so you clearly have like just come across us. So I highly, highly recommend you get this book. This will answer your question completely. It has over 800 scientific references and will answer your question very clearly. You also could go to YouTube and watch just about any video we have on YouTube. You can listen to our podcast, but just so you know, we teach the exact opposite of what you've been advised. You've been advised high protein, low carb. We're going to say uh, low protein, low fat, high carb. Literally the exact opposite. This book actually talks about the importance of being quote unquote low protein compared to everybody else. It's really appropriate protein. It's, it's the healthy amount of protein, but compared to the world out there, you would classify it as low protein. So uh, that's what will get you optimal insulin sensitivity, get you help, have to get you your ideal body weight. So highly, highly recommend um, you learn the science. All right. Amazing info about fruits. I love buckwheat groats with chia, cinnamon, blueberries, and cherries. That's amazing, Linda. Love that. Fantastic. That seems like a very good mastering diabetes breakfast. And walk at home on YouTube is my go-to. 15-minute walk before or after meals is key to keeping my levels in check. Excellent. Excellent. Walking is, a, is amazing. Okay. All right. So this has been fun, guys. Um, appreciate you all showing up here. Um, I do want to, I always want to share one more thing before we go. On our website, we have a bunch of recipes. Okay. So you just type in Mastering Diabetes Recipes and you'll be able to see what I'm about to share on my screen. Okay. So these are the recipes that will help you become more energetic right here. And I want you, the thing that's cool about these recipes is that we have done all the thinking for you when it comes to what's the appropriate balance of uh, greens and non-starchy vegetables and then the carbohydrate-rich foods. We've done that work for you, okay? And so just simply following these recipes is going to help you maximize your insulin sensitivity, like no questions asked. These are delicious recipes. Uh, we're very proud that our ingredients are very easy to find. They're not expensive ingredients. It's not fancy. It's very, very doable and sustainable. Okay. So hopefully some of these recipes um, are exciting to you and you'd like to try them. And I hope you actually do. So they're just free on our website. Go check it out there. And this has been super fun. So thank you guys. And um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Catch you next week.